ministers that are here this morning and I am honored we have some special guests that are with us this morning as well. We certainly honor the Lord for our Father. Amen. Pastor Emeritus Michael Crenshaw. And Lady Crenshaw being in the house this morning. Amen. They, are, they are always welcome. They are always at home. And, and, and they, they have semi-retired. Not completely. I don't think the work is ever always all the way done. Amen. We sang the song and said we're going to work until the day is done. But we thank God for them being here with us this morning and for the dear saints that have traveled over the dangerous highways uh, with my big little sister. Uh, I call her Lee, but Pastor Latanya Lee LaBird. Do the high. I do the high. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Amen. But we are grateful for the Lord for her being here this morning. I was telling them, and I'm going to get out of the way. Uh, we've been in council, in council uh, this week, and I was saying a few days, I said, man, I should have got somebody to come in and preach for me Sunday. I said, but I'm not going to put that on our ministers, and I wouldn't dare call anybody at this point, so we're going to do what we got to do. And uh, out of the blue, hallelujah, God had a realm in the woods. She was going to be, she called and said, I'm coming through and I'm going to come and worship with you all this morning. And I said, all right, God bless you. Would you just pray for us? And when I hung up, I, I said, wait a minute. I did say, I wish, I said, if you got one in the, in the oven, I'm going to put you up. She said, I knew you would get ready to call me. I said, hallelujah. Thank God for the realm in the bush. I believe she has a word for the house this morning. Would you help me bring her stand to your feet? As we receive Pastor Latanya Lee uh, Lightbird, I'm country Lightbird, Lightbird, Amen. At this time, we're going to ask her to take our liberty. Would you greet her with a hearty praise the Lord? Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, He's worthy. He's worthy. house this morning. I honor God in this place. I bring you greetings from the place of outpouring apostolic ministries in Lithonia, Georgia. And I honor my little big brother, Pastor Crenshaw, and my dad, um, Elder Mike and First Lady. I guess I can still say that. Half a First Lady. I almost <laughs> For the chunk, amen. And to First Lady Kim, my sister, and to all the saints of God, it's so good to see all of you here. Some old friends that we grew up with. I just praise God for being here this morning. I greet you all in your respective places in the name of Jesus. As um, Pastor said, I call this morning because you know we were wondering what we were gonna do and. I said, well, let me call my brother C. And when I called and I talked with First Lady, and I said, just save us a seat next to you. And before I could put the phone all the way down, I said, he gonna call me back. <laughs> and sure enough, the phone was ringing. Amen. But I just thank God for being here with you this morning. Amen. God is such an awesome God, and we bless him. And I'm not going to be before you long, but I'm going to ask you to go with me into the book of Haggai, chapter 2. Watch out. Haggai, chapter 2. Thank you. And I thank God for those that came over the highway with me. Amen. We had, you know, the brothers wanted to come, but then, you know, they had to do what the Bible say, make the bread. Amen. So they had to work this to work this weekend, and my husband had to work today. But he does send his love, and he said to tell you all that he's sorry he couldn't be here, but he had to make sure that the bills get paid for the next month. Amen. So and he sends his love. Hey, I chapter two. I always feel so short. 
I know I'm not the tallest person in the world, but I always feel so short standing behind the sacred desk. But nevertheless, hey God, chapter two. Begin at verse number three. If you have it, say amen like you love Jesus. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshaphat, yes, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord. And work, for I am with you, said the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remaineth among you. Fear not. Drop me down to verse number seven. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. In this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The subject this morning is centered in the latter clause of verse 7 and the first clause of verse 9. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. Before you sit down, we're going to pray. But the subject this morning is a glory-filled house. A glory filled house. Come on, everybody. Let's lift our voices again and talk to the Lord one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you this morning for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for bringing us to this place. We thank you for your assignment and for your divine appointment. We give you praise for your anointing already being here in this house. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we release the reins over to you. Holy Ghost, do what you do best. Put on your bro games and walk up and down these aisles. Move in and out of these pews like lightning. In the name of Jesus, let your glory fill this place like never before. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, God, step to the right and do the preaching. Not I, but the Christ that lives on the inside. Strengthen this vessel of clay and have Strengthen this body for your glory. 
his glory. And even on yesterday when I ministered and the Lord spoke to us. This morning as I got up and even before Pastor called, I could still hear it raining in my spirit. And what God is saying to his house, to his people, is that it's time for us to return and go back to the old landmark. Sometimes when we hear go back to the old landmark, some of us push it away because we remember some of the things that we were taught in the old church. I'm not going to get on any of them this morning, but y'all know some of the stuff that we were taught and we, they said it was sin and then we got older and found out that it really wasn't sin. But because we had to obey those that had the rule over us, because disobedience is sin. Even if heel and toe out shoes are not sin, it becomes sin to you when you disobey the leadership. And so as God is saying for us to return back to the place that we left him, many times we look at the church and I don't know about you, but when you step into a leadership role, you have a tendency to look at where we are right now versus where we used to be. Let's look at the power that we used to have in the house versus what we have today. We can all declare if you've been in the church any length of time, if you got in the church any time before 1984, you can look at the church and the condition of the house and you can see the drastic decline in power. And we make the statement that the church has lost its power. But that's not a true statement because God is not a powerless God. He declares I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. There was a time when we had prayer meeting and folk actually came and called on the name of the 
the authority yes. has shifted. I didn't think I was going to go this way this morning, but I hear it in my spirit that when the authority over the house, when you have pastors and leaders that are not in cahoots with what the word of God is saying for the house, that's when you have lawlessness. Because when there is no authority, the people run wild.
didn't have time to change his clothes. <laughs> David comes running in with grass in his hair, with dirt on his robe. He's stinking like sheep because he's been holding sheep all day. He's been nursing sheep. And he walks in the house without a clue. Resurrects. 
that your hands can't touch anything. Everybody's going to know that you're an empty-headed, powerless, non-creative God. And so David gets the assignment because after the ark of God has been taken, it was gone for 400 years. David gets the assignment to go and get the ark of God and bring it home to Jerusalem. David brings it back and he prepares a place before he goes to get the ark. He prepares an altar. Uh -huh. He prepares a place so that
to stay in position. Because yes. when you get out of position, you get bloody. But I ain't going to go there this afternoon. But he tells God, I want to do it. He said, David, you can't do it. But because you want to do it so bad, I'm going to let somebody in your generation do it.
the same person that you used to be. See, I was trying to control this myself, but I'm going to let the Lord do this thing. When you get a glory kiss, it means that your old habits and your old nature no longer has a seat of authority in your life. Why? Because when you get a kiss of glory, you get a kiss of Jesus. It's when he comes and takes you in his arms and rubs up against you so much so that when he lets you go, you look like him. You smell like him. You're coming in the glory. You shine like new mother. Says who remembers? Who remembers those days? I said it yesterday and it bears repeating. When you really get in the glory. See, we're used to just experiencing the drips and drops of anointing. We're used to pleasurable stimuli in the presence of God. What do I mean, pleasurable stimuli? Oh, I'm going to come in and I'm going to get my dance. I'm going to get my spiritual workout on. I'm going to twirl and I'm going to run up and down the aisle. But when I get back to my seat, I'm going to get my cell phone out and I'm going to take a selfie.
relationship because he wants to annihilate our sound. That sound that you have, all you doing is going, oh, Jesus. Uh, somebody, bring it, bring it, bring it. But God is going to respond to you, oh, Jesus. Why? Because it's that ooh that he gave you in the middle of the night when the pastor wasn't around, when the first lady wasn't around. He brought that sound in you out of your tribulation.
And that's when his train fills the temple. That's when he comes in and he puts his stamp of approval on it. God is saying this morning, I want a glory filled house. If you come in a place like this, and when I walked in, I felt it. I felt the presence of God. I felt the glory of the Lord. And that ain't something that you feel in every place that you go. Let me just tell you. There are some places that I have gone, and I'm like, I'm going to the bathroom, and I'm going to figure out which one of these exit doors I'm going to get out of. Why? Because when there's just flesh on parade, the servant, it may be hot, and it may be all this, and all of that. How long y'all gonna do this today? I just came to get my Jesus on. I wasn't asking for all of this. Why? Because you came in a house that welcomes the glory. But all you wanted was a tickle. All you wanted was an emotional stimuli. And God is saying, I'm putting the stop sign. No longer will you be able to come in and just get your emotions tickled. No longer will you be able to come in with all of your flesh being on parade. You got a new pair of shoes and you want to make sure everybody see the shoes. So this is the Sunday you're going to run around the church. God is going to allow some of y'all to start tripping in here. Why? Because it's flesh. He said no flesh is going to glory in my presence. I 
showed up with a special invitation. When he fills the house with his glory, it means that he makes his abode there. He's no longer a visitor, but he comes to dwell. Stand to your feet. Because some of y'all, I can look at your face and tell I lost you. I'm looking at your face and I see But you got another agenda after this service. You already got plans that you're going to beat your boo. You already got plans that you and your girls going to get together after church. You already got plans. You got another agenda. When the message like this is For God to be the authority in your life. Because the glory brings submission. God is not going to anoint anything that will not submit to his authority. As you long as you loving the sin that you're in, you can't have an encounter with glory. Yeah. 
Yo. Yeah. 